Good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning here anyway, and I'm really excited about today's Facebook Live tutorial. We are going to start with some questions. Well, actually, I've had loads of questions through this week, and it's been brilliant. Uh, I'm loving engaging with you all. I'm loving being able to help you all. It really makes me happy to be able to help you. And if you're out there and you want to say hi, give me a shout out, that'd be great. I like to feel like we're part of a community here and I want to feel like I'm talking to you <laughs> rather than talking at you. But we'll start with some problems that have come in today. Um, let's bring in a problem from, let me bring in a problem here from Iman. And she was in our tutorial last week. Iman says, thank you so much, Mrs. Weatherly. Well, Iman, that is not a problem. I'm here to help. Your answers certainly cleared things up. Well, even better, okay? Um, I know I've already asked a lot. Iman, you must always just ask. It's fine. I'm here to help. Um, but next week, would it be possible to touch on wave rectification under topic 11.3 capacitance, as well as the relationship between current magnetic flux and EMF and how to answer questions that ask to use Lenz's Faraday's law to explain occurrences in a circuit. Goodness me, that's quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on Faraday's law and explaining the occurrences in a circuit and looking at magnetic flux and EMF. So Iman, if that's okay with you, I will concentrate on Faraday's law, magnetic flux and EMF today. And I'll put your question up here because yours is not the only question we had on uh, EMF this week and be prepared to lose my face. You ready? There. Because <laughs> we had an email in from Catherine or Kathy as she calls herself. She's attached a question that she's struggling with and she says, hi Sally, how are you? I'm great. Thanks Kathy. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm very good. I was trying to solve this question. Determine the maximum electromagnetic force induced in the coil. And she said, see attachments, but I couldn't because I've no idea what point to take from the graph. The mark scheme says the answer is 3.2 millivolts, but my result was different and I can't find the error. Thanks in advance for your help. Kathy, no bother. Let's look at that in just a sec because yours is not the only one we've had in about EMF and magnetic flux and graphs and things like that. And here is a question from Justin. And Justin says he's struggling with a double slit interference in waves and he's struggling with AC generator graphs and electromagnetic induction. So these, if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at Faraday's law and electromagnetic induction, particularly looking at the AC generator graphs. And of course, this all comes into the higher level topic. So if you're looking at a higher level topic in IB physics, this generally does tend to be quite a tricky one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my iPad where I've prepared a couple of notes for us to talk through on um, topic 11. So what is obvious this week is that there are problems with Faraday's law and with AC generator graphs. And we've seen that three people have written in this week on this topic alone. So let's go over Faraday's law and let's look at the situations that you might find it. Once we've done that, we can then go and have a look at the AC generator graph problem. So Faraday's law, if you were to look into your uh, data booklet, your data booklet would give the equation, the EMF is equal to negative N, the change in phi over the change in time. So how phi or magnetic flux changes with time. And I don't know about you, but I don't find that equation particularly helpful. Okay, so let's substitute in the equation for magnetic flux into this equation. So what we have is negative N, which is the number of coils, times the change in magnetic flux, which is BA cos theta over the change in time. And that's becoming a little bit more simple because what that tells us is that only one of these variables is going to change with time. And depending on what kind of situation we're looking at, we can see which variable will change with time, and then we can input the correct data. So let's look at situation one down here on the left. Situation one has a metal rod between a magnetic field. And if you can imagine a magnetic field extending out this way a little bit, so it's coming down like that, if you would, wouldn't mind doing that for me. 
I just couldn't draw it <laughs> to be longer. So we have a magnetic field and what we, and that's a constant magnetic field. So what that tells us is if we write down the EMF induced is equal to minus N, the change in B A cos theta over the change in time. We know that B, the magnetic field strength, is not going to change with time, okay? Because that's a constant magnetic field. So that's going to stay constant. If we look at what the, as we move the, the rod across, that is going to induce an EMF. And what happens is that it changes the area that it covers as it rolls along these rods increases. So the area changes with time. And the cos theta, so the area does change with time. The cos theta is the angle made with the magnetic field strength or the magnetic field lines, and that angle doesn't change with time. So what has become obvious in situation one is that the EMF is equal to minus N, which is a number of coils. In this case, it's just one, times B, times cos theta, times the change in area with time. So the change in area with time we need to look at in a little bit more detail. This rod will change, will move with a speed V. Let's look at area. What is area? I'm going to move a wee bit further down. So E is equal to, as we've said, minus N B cos theta, the change in area of time. Well, what is area? Area is length times breadth. Okay. So times the change in length over time times breadth because the breadth is not going to change the width of the rod here that breadth is not going to change so now we're really looking at what is the change in length with time what's the change in distance with time and that is velocity so our equation for emf simply becomes minus n which is the number of coils in this case it would be one times b and that would be given in the question cos theta well your theta is 90 times the breadth times the speed and that's how you deal with a question where you have a change in area i'm going to do a look at situation two now i'm going to do my working for situation two up here to give us a bit of space okay situation two what we have here is a basic ac generator and you can see that we have the coil in the middle there's one coil so n is equal to 1, and that doesn't change throughout. And we can see that it's, it's rotating in, an, in a clockwise direction. These magnets on either side of situation 2 are permanent magnets, so B is not going to change. So let's look at our equation for EMF. E equals minus N, the change in B A cos theta over the change in time. We know that B is not going to change with time. The area of the coil is not going to change with time. So what we're looking at in this case is E is equal to minus N B A, the change in cos theta with the change in time. So we're looking at the angular velocity there. So we can pop the angular velocity into that equation and we can get uh, a value for the EMF. That is not often asked in IB physics. What's more likely with situation two is that you'd get a graph. And we're going to look at the graph on the next slide. Okay. What is likely is that you'd see a situation like situation three. And what we have here is we have a number of coils. N is equal to three in here. And we can see that that coils, that set of coils, they move from a place where there's magnetic field strength to a place where the magnetic field strength is zero. So what happens is that our magnetic field strength, we've got E is equal to minus N, the change in B A cos theta with a change in time. The area of the coils doesn't change. The angle the coils make with the magnetic field's lines doesn't change. But what does change is our change in magnetic field strength with time because that goes from a value to zero okay so our equation then becomes e equals minus n which would be three in this case a you'd be given the area of the coil cos theta and then it would be times how quickly b changes with time so you might have for example this might be b is equal to 10 
milliteslas, and then it goes to zero. So your change in B with time is 10 milliteslas down to zero, minus zero, and that might happen in two milliseconds, and in which case your change in time would be two times 10 to the minus three. And then you have there a value for your change in B with time. So when you're given the task of finding the EMF with using you know, the explicit Faraday's law here, you need to assess which one of these variables is going to change with time. It's either going to be your magnetic field strength, it's going to be the area changing with time, or it's going to be the, the, the angle changing with time. And in which case you have to work out what that numerical value of changing with time is. That's Faraday's law. Moving on to an AC generator graph. And I've been asked this on Facebook already this week, and I've been asked it by email as well, by somebody else. So it's obviously a difficult problem. Let's look at it in detail. Well, sometimes it starts off quite nice and easy. Sometimes it starts off by giving you the magnetic flux linkage with time, and that's in milliseconds. Let's be careful with that. And it says calculate the frequency of rotation of the coil. Well, that's quite nice because we know that frequency is equal to one over time period. And we can work out the time period from the graph. We start here. We follow one full oscillation. It gets to five milliseconds. So time period is equal to five times 10 to the minus three seconds. So therefore, one divided by five milliseconds. Let me do that in my calculator. I should be able to do that, shouldn't I? There we go. One divided by five milliseconds is equal to 200 hertz. So our frequency of rotation is 200 hertz. It rotates 200 times per second. Calculate the maximum EMF induced by the generator. Well, if we go back to this idea of Faraday's law, and we see that it was equal to the change. Oh, can I do that again? <laughs> If we go back to Faraday's law and we see it's equal to the change in magnetic flux linkage with time. Okay, so what we have on this graph is magnetic flux linkage. That already takes your N into account. So what we need to do is look at the change in magnetic flux linkage with time, the maximum change in magnetic flux linkage with time. Well, the change in what we have here, this equation just says the gradient. Okay, so we need to find the maximum gradient of this graph. And the maximum gradient of this graph happens here at two and a half milliseconds. It happens here at five milliseconds. And it happens here at 7.5 milliseconds. So how do we find the gradient of the graph at that point? Well, we, we draw a tangent and I'm going to try to put a line on my iPad here. Let's see if that works. And it does using a, using a ruler. So we have to find the gradient of that line. Bear with me while I do so. So let's take this point here. Goes like that. I like to draw a triangle. You, you may just pick two points. I like to draw a triangle. Uh, so we'll do, it is the change in Y over the change in X to give us the gradient at that point. The change in Y goes from 5.5 uh, uh, all the way down to minus 5, because that's a minus 5, we plus it. And then we've got the change in y at x is 3.5 minus 1.5. So our Gradient there is 5.5 .5 plus 5 divided by uh, 2 gives us 5. Oh, that was milliseconds. That was milliseconds. We need to times that by 10 to minus 3. I mean, this is physics in action, guys, okay? 5.5 .5 plus 5 divided by um, 2 minus 3 gives us 5,000. 250 
volts. Okay, and there's a minus or a plus, depending on where you want to be with that. But so that's the magnitude of the uh, AC, the maximum EMF induced by the generator. That's a lot of volts, but that's a good question to do. And finally, calculate the VRMS, root mean squared voltage of the generator. So we take the formula for VRMS from the data booklet is equal to Vmax divided by root 2. So Vmax is equal to 5250. We just calculated that in the last question. We divide it by root 2. And our answer is 3712. That's quite a lot of significant figures. Uh, everything else in the question has been given to maximum of 2. So I think the last one where we gave it to 3 significant figures is fine. But to give it to four significant figures is a bit overkill. So let's just go back down to two significant figures, 3,700 volts. The, the hardest thing they can ask you in an AC generator graph question is to calculate the maximum EMF induced. And folks, all you have to do is take a tangent at the maximum gradient and find out what that gradient is.